Before we get into the video, I wanted to share with you a tool that David and I have been using in our businesses to bring more profits. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to sell on Amazon. If you're selling on Amazon, you have to have a competitive edge. We use a tool called Ava.Guru. Uh, it has dashboard reporting, inventory management, replenishment forecasting, profitability reports, reimbursements, and my favorite tool, dynamic pricing. It adjusts prices, it increases profitability. David and I have used this tool to, to save thousands of dollars to the bottom line. There's a special 50% off your first month, Coupon code firing the man 50. Go on over to eva.guru and enter in firing the man 50 to get 50% off your first month. Bring that money in. Profits, profits, baby. All right, on to the video. A lot of our listings have both FBA and FBM to our listeners that would be fulfilled by Amazon or fulfilled by merchant. Given the inventory restrictions, sometimes we'll go out of stock and cannot replenish our FBA inventory. And so we have FBM listings that serve as kind of a backup. However, we want to ensure that our FBA listings always have the buy box, assuming that they are in stock. Recently, we increased some of our FBA prices, but forgot to adjust our FBM prices. Therefore, the FBM list listing won the buy box and those are significantly less profitable. So our question is, is there a way to always have your FBM listings be more expensive than your FBA listings? And the answer is yes, absolutely. First of all, let's start from for every single SKU, does it make sense to have an FBM version? Because, you know, in the past, like five years ago, it was the discussion of like FBM is better. Two years ago, let's do FBM for some of the items. Let's do FBA for some others. Today, it's like FBA is the only way. You know, that's the right way. It's the most cost effect. And I agree with that, right? We all agree. FBA is the right way. Unless you have some product which is oversized or some like dangerous items, etc., right? Or melting item, things like that. But here you go. For every single FBA, uh, there is an out of stock challenge. And if you have the warehouse and able to fulfill the orders, it makes a lot of sense to have the FBM version. Now, having the FBM version has another interesting fact like I would like to share. If on the same listing, the customer sees the FBA version, let's say the price is $10, but also sees that there is another seller actually selling it for $11. But that's the perception, right? Actually, there is no other seller. It's you with your FBM listing and the FBM listing is, let's say, 10% uh, more expensive. But the consumer, the shopper thinks like, hey, there's another guy selling for $11. We see that the, it helped the conversion rate too, you know, like to having like another seller selling it for a for a higher price as they go into that FBA listing. So the question is like, how can you keep the FBA listings and FBA FBM listings together? Now, one of the the best parts of best parts of Eva. Now, okay, so let's let's kind of like again a little bit cut here. Okay, so I'm gonna show about the parent ASIN pricing. Okay, let's talk about the parent and child pricing because like I mean I would like to kind of cover two things at the same time. So one is that like you have the FBA and the FBM version. And the other one is like, also you have different variations of the same product and you would like to control everything all together. Meaning that, for example, for this parent ASIN, one parent ASIN, you have a master child, like I mean in the setting. So this first one is a master child. And the second SKU is the FBM version of the first. Now, what you want to do is like, you want to decide that your FBM to be always 10% above the FBA. So it can easily be set up on the EVA parent-child pricing. Now, not only that you can set up the FBM version, but also you can set up like a two-pack version, let's say to be always 80% more than the master and for the child, 80% more than the child. So uh, with all the different variations of colors, size, and also like two pack, four pack, eight pack versions and FBA and FBM, you're able to set up like custom rules to make it work. That's one way, the manual way, but you have the full control. And the second is like EVA AI is automatically, if you have an FBM version and an FBA version, EVA AI will automatically set the FBA 
IBM a bit more higher than the FBA. So you don't need to even touch that because it will work automatically. Now the question is, hey, what about if the dynamic pricing changes the FBA? Like next day, the FBA price goes 3% up. What will happen with the FBM? If that happens, the EVA will also synchronize the FBM aligned with that FBA price. Meaning if FBA price increases by 3%, FBM price will also increase by 3%. So the relationship that you define, which is like, let's say, FBM to be always 10% above will be maintained if the, the child SQ, which is the master, that's the FBA price changes, then automatically all the other slave SKUs or slave ASINs prices will be changing accordingly. This is huge. And, and this makes, yeah, we have a, quite a few products that have that two pack, four pack, eight pack type of variation and being able to move them in tandem with each other, really, really helpful. And so, yeah, this is, this is a great solution to problem number seven. So Ken, anything else we want to cover or hi, anything else we want to cover while we're here? Thanks for watching this video. If you got some value out of this, would you please hit the like and subscribe button? This is a free way to support the show and it really helps us build our audience.